Good morning. It's Michelle Flood with EXP Realty in lovely Florida, down th from Tampa through the Skyway Bridge, all the way down to Siesta Key, Florida. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening right now in the market, especially with um, investors and why it's really important for you to take heed when an investor comes knocking on your door. Um, first, I want to just talk a little bit about how interest rates are going up, okay? So it went up 0.75 again this week. It went up last week. We're up around an average of 5.7% interest rates, uh, up from like 2% at the beginning of the year. So things are switching, and investors are are noticing that things are switching. And so they're, they're sh uh, switching up the way that they're actually doing business as well with um, with sellers and so i think they sort of target sellers knowing that sellers are feeling the crunch in the market and understanding that you know sellers are starting to see that things are sitting on the market a little longer than they used to be so they are taking advantage of the fact that sellers might be a little desperate to make sure that they get the right amount of money for their property so in the beginning of this market we saw that agents are uh, corporations that were coming in and buying properties from uh, sellers were spending lots and lots of money for it, and they didn't mind using a real estate agent. In fact, they would contact the, the seller's agent and they would use them as their realtor so that the, the realtor was actually getting both sides of the transaction because they knew that this was a hot market. Interest rates were so low that people were going to be jumping in and trying to buy properties really quick. And so they wanted to get in because they had cash, they could close fast, and they can allow sellers certain um, benefits of dealing with them as cash buyers and corporate buyers. Um, so now it's not quite that way because properties are beginning to sit on the market a little longer based on the fact that, you know, interest rates are rising and the market is sort of cooling off a little. Uh, it, their prices are still going up about 20% or so, even though things are sitting longer on the market, an average of about 20 days on the market. So now when they see properties that are desirable, they want to come in and swoop in and buy this property. And so they ask the sellers to not use a real estate agent to help them sell their property. They won't deal with a seller and give them the cash and give them some of the perks of being able to buy the property or sell their property to an investor if the seller in, you know, wants to use a, a list agent. And that's kind of dangerous because they – they usually employ some sort of a real estate agent to write up their contracts. And if they don't, they use a lawyer. Sometimes they have both. And so now the the company is protected, but the seller is kind of left out to dry by not really knowing what's happening with the paperwork that they've signed. What does anything mean? You know, time is of the essence. Are you Are you monitoring as a seller? the dates that things need to be accomplished by, what happens if you can't find a property and you're still in your house after the days negotiated for you to be allowed to stay in the house, if that's something that's even negotiated in the contract, and then your escrow money, who's holding that escrow money. A lot of times the, the buyer who's the corporate buyer, who is the company that's buying it, that's using the agent, also owns the title company. And so they're hanging on to the money to, you know, for the earnest money deposit. And so you need to see proof of that. You need to see they need to do an affiliated business disclosure if they're connected at all with all of these entities, with the, the company, with the lawyer, with the real estate agent. If all of these people are under one umbrella, that needs to be disclosed to you. It's really important. So the, they want you to not use an, a, a real estate agent, especially if they see that this house right here is going to sell. This house is worth every penny of what they're offering them, if not more. And they know that if a real estate agent is in the middle of this transaction, that there's probably going to be more people that are going to come along and drive the price up a little bit. Probably not as much as it was happening last year. But yeah, you know, when you have a home that has minimal work that needs to be done on it and you have a starting price, that's something that's going to make people walk in there. You're going to have several buyers walk through the door and then you're probably going to go ahead and end up with multiple offers. And this is what the corporate buyer is trying to avoid. 
because they don't want to have to pay top dollar and then they don't want to have to pay, you know, another agent any any uh, commission when the corporate buyer who has the agent working for them is definitely paying that real estate agent that works for them to their percentage of the sale of this property. So you're just not represented as the seller and the buyer has all the power and it really shouldn't be that way. I, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be represented at all or one side should have more power than the other. The point of having a contract and having representation is that everybody's treated fairly in the deal. The other thing that I see a lot of people do when they end up getting a contract from a corporate buyer is they don't even know what they're signing. They, they haven't really examined their documents. They don't understand the dates that are going to come up and go. They don't understand what kind of uh, an inspection they're going to have. They don't know even if inspections have happened because corporate inspections can sometimes look very different than if a private person was to come in and do an inspection, a four point to get the wind mitigation, all of that stuff done. Because if you're a private buyer, all of these things are important because it lowers the price of your homeowner's insurance if you get a favorable home inspection. Plus, as a seller, you're if you're going with a corporate buyer that's just coming and snapping a few pictures and walking out the door, you're thinking to yourself, I don't have to make these repairs. And yes, I can understand that that's desirable. But, you know, there's pros and cons to both of these situations. And because they know you don't aren't using an agent on your on your side, they know that they can give you what the house is probably appraising at instead of or is coming up in a not appraisal because real estate agents don't do appraisals, but the market value of the property, they're going to give you that and nothing else instead of that being a jumping off point for you to maybe perhaps get more money than you could have. So if you've ever were working with an agent or you considered working with an agent or you know somebody that's an agent, I'm an agent, you could hit me up with somebody does come to you with a corporate offer. Let me review the docs for you. You know, we can work something out. Uh, if I end up having to do more work for you, but let me review the docs at the very least. I've had two people that I've, I'm very close to in the last month that have had corporate buyers or private buyers that didn't want to use any real estate agent do up all the paperwork and send it to these people and they signed it and they didn't even know what they signed. This is a contract. This is a legally binding contract and it's very serious. So you need to pay attention to what you're signing and know exactly what you're doing. Why do you want to use a real estate agent? Well, because we subscribe to a code of ethics and we take advantage of lots of educational opportunities and training. And so we, even some of us have designations and specialties. We're committed as real, realtors because you can't, you can, you can pass the real estate test, but you don't become a realtor until you actually join a board and join the National Association of Realtors. We pay dues to do that every six months. So you can have a real estate license and you can do all the things that a realtor does, sans looking at the MLS and calling yourself a realtor. But we're held to a standard of having extra education every two years to make sure we stay up to date with laws and trends that are happening. And we are committed to treating all parties in the transaction honestly. A corporation that's shoving you a contract where an agent is not representing you and in in that package of papers, you're, you're probably signing that right away. So you're not being treated fairly or you could have the possibility of not being treated fa fairly because the loyalty of whoever's writing up that contract for that corporation is to the corporation and not you as the seller. So like we talked about before, they might come in right at what the market value is. If they want to snap up your house that fast, you need to ask yourself, why are they trying to snap up my house like this? This price that they gave me is probably a stepping off point. So mostly you may have to do some cosmetic repairs if you go through with your real estate agent, but you're also going to probably end up with more money. And in actuality, Statistics have shown that if you use a real estate agent, you're going to ultimately end up with more money than you did if you had sold it by yourself. 
even if it doesn't look that way to you, if you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I got to do this and then I've got to pay all this money to do that and then I've got to pay my real estate agent too. If they're coming in and telling you you don't have to do a goddamn thing, they know that the house is worth more than what, what your asking price would be. And the asking price is a stepping off point. When I price a property, I try to do it as competitively as possible. I'm trying to get people in the door and I'm trying to get as many people in door in the door as I possibly can so that I end up in a multiple offer situation, especially in this kind of market. We're still in a place where we should be still getting multiple offers if we're priced competitively and there's not a lot of cosmetic work or significant work that needs to be done to the property. So ask yourself why. Ask yourself why they're telling you they don't want to use a real estate agent and ask yourself why they want to snap it up so quickly. So we do do a lot of marketing too as a real estate agent, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how the house is going to be sold. Honestly, the MLS is still our friend. A lot of people start their search online. So you're probably going to find a house on your own. That's how they're finding the house. But again, the code of ethics falls into that whole way of marketing so that you know that we have to cooperate and use an ethical uh, uh, an ethical standard in the way that we do negotiate our transactions and work with other real estate agents it's there's so much to it that isn't just about oh i got an offer let me uh let me just do this with my neighbor over here that saw me because he was out mowing the lawn and he asked me if i was going to sell my house and now i am and and he's going to buy it for me and everything's going to be great not not always and what if there's a dispute there's so many things that could go wrong so the thing is when we work for you we're also providing providing security for you in this house you don't know who's coming in and out of your house you don't even know who this corporation is have you done any background work on this person do you know if it's an actual real estate company do you know if it's just some attorney that hung a shingle up because re attorneys that have passed the bar all they have to do is take the law portion of a real estate exam and they can get their license you don't know who's coming through your door it's really important to know that a real estate agent is not going to let strangers walk through and they're not going to just be happy to throw a sign up and a lockbox on your door and call it a day and charge you 300 bucks to do something and sit over the other side and wait fat, dumb and happy so they can make money off the sale, make money off the title work of the property because they'll do that. They don't care because they're making money other places. They don't need your transaction to make money. This is our bread and butter as realtors. This is how we make money. When we sell a house, not when we list it, but when we sell it. Not when we write an offer, but when we close the transactions and the keys and the checks slide across the table. So what are those possible pitfalls that could happen? We help you objectively evaluate a buyer's proposal without compromising your marketing position. So we know what you need. We're listening to the buyer. We know what they're doing. So we understand that this is a stepping off point. This is only an initial agreement and only the beginning of the process of appraisals, inspections, and financing, and lots of other things that could go wrong. Your agent can help you write a legally binding win-win agreement that will, make it, that will make it more likely to make it through the process and not just get stuck someplace. How, what happens when the inspection doesn't work? What happens if the appraisal comes up short? How, where did you get even a letter that says these people are, are approved to buy? Or have you now yanked your property off the market for, you know, six months or 90 days or six months? Why, why would you do that? Also, lots of things can happen between the initial sale and the closing or settlement of the property. What happens if there are unexpected repairs at the um agent or that require the buyer to obtain financing what happens if there's a cloud on the title that that is discovered during the paperwork and, requ and required paperwork alone is overwhelming for sellers um you're the best person to objectively help you resolve these issues and more during the transaction is a a real estate agent plus even helping you get the move done it, a real estate agent can help you with all of those things clouds on the title happen all the time somebody puts a fence in the wrong place property lines are not recorded properly from one closed transaction to another that once they hit the the county 
there are so many things that I have seen in 16 years of doing this to just have, you know, okay, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just going to trust this company that I don't know anything about to write up this offer or some private person that was mowing his lawn down the street saw me mowing my lawn and he said he's going to come and buy it. And then he sends me the paperwork and I sign it and I don't even know where to begin in this transaction. This is one of the biggest transactions that you're going to ever do in your life. And you're just going to leave it up to the chance that somebody's watching out for you. You know, real estate property that's being sold in Florida, the average sales price is like three hundred to $350,000. If you had a problem, a tax problem, and the tax problem was three hundred or three hundred and fifty thousand or more dollars. Are you going to try to go to the IRS on your own and negotiate this? Or are you going to have a, a a tax professional help you? It's the same thing when you hire a real estate agent. It's a relatively small cost involved in selling your home as opposed to thousands of dollars in mistakes and errors and omissions and problems that you can have trying to do it alone or allowing somebody on the other side to take control of the sale of your property. So it's smart to find a real estate professional to help you sell your home. And if you have any questions about anything that I've said, or you'd like to just hit me up because you already did accept an offer from a corporate per buyer or a, a private buyer, and you don't know anything about them, you don't know if they have the money to close, you don't know you know what happens, did you read the contract, do you understand the contract, How you, you know what do the inspections require, anything you might not know, please hit me up. I'm going to leave my website in the description box. Please follow me on um, uh, YouTube. That would be amazing if you would do that. And I appreciate you watching if you stayed this long, 17 whole minutes, dude. I try to go slow long, or faster than that, but it don't always work. Have a good day. My name is Michelle Flood, and I'm with eXp Realty. Thanks for watching.